changing in the name of Jesus. Your situation is changing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I just want to welcome you to yet another episode of the Watchman Ministry. Today we want to deliberate on a subject which is entitled the effects of prayer. The effects of prayer. It can also be entitled to the effects of the spoken word. The effects of prayer. I'm going to read just a few verses from the word of God. I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 up to verse 5. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was over it, over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. In this passage of scripture, we see God changing his word through the spoken word. Prayer, according to the Bible, is a subset of spoken words. Spoken words that are directed to God. A dialogue with God. There is a role that a spoken word speaks um, to our situations. There is a role that the spoken word has in transforming the situations and the circumstances around us. Prayer is primarily spoken words, but it is not restricted to spoken words because there are prayers in the heart also where a person does not uh, speak out anything. There are prayers by the Spirit of God where there are no specific utterances, but the, the Holy Spirit in our spirit will be speaking to the Almighty God. I also want to read from Matthew chapter 6. I will start from verse 9. It says, In this manner therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, this is the famous, or the well-known Lord's Prayer, which is also an example of the spoken word. Because there is power in the spoken word, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray to God to the Father or to engage in a prayer dialogue with God to the Father. Because when we pray, we are able to receive from the Almighty God. That's why it's so imperative for us to dedicate ourselves to prayer. Because prayer has got powerful effects even in our lives. When we don't pray, we deprive ourselves of the things that could be easily granted to us by God when we pray. I'm going to read from James chapter 4. I'll start by reading from verse 2. It says, You lust and do not have. You matter and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. The Bible indicates in the last part of verse 2 that when we don't ask, we don't receive anything. We do not have because we do not ask. So among those who don't have, there are some who don't have the necessary faith, some who are lazy to have, and some who do not have, not because they are lazy, not because they are last to fall, but because they do not ask from God. So one major effect of prayer is that 
it gives us a platform to petition God to be found so that we can receive. But when we are dialoguing with God the Father because He knows everything about us, we need to have the right attitude in the heart. In verse 3, the, the Bible says, You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. So when we are asking, we must be certain that we are not asking amiss of the purpose or the plan of God for our lives. That you may spend it on your pleasures. We must never be motivated by a desire to spend whatever we are asking for on our pleasures. We must be motivated by a desire to advance the kingdom government of God. I'm going to conclude with Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 which inculcates in us a kingdom mentality. It says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. So the Bible says we must seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that is our petitions, the things that we are longing for, they shall be added unto us. So when we ask, we must make sure that uh, we have got the kingdom of God as um, the primary goal uh, of our lives, that we want to expand and advance the purposes of the kingdom of God. So with this short message, I just want to thank you for joining us in the Watchman Ministry because the Watchman Ministry is a ministry of dialoguing with God, presenting to God specific situations and circumstances that um, our brothers and sisters are going through. That our brothers and sisters are going through all over the earth. So I just want to read a few prophetic messages that God gave me, which we need to take note of in our prayers so that uh, the Spirit of God can assist us even as we proceed with our lives. Uh, there are quite a number of messages that God gave me, but um, the Spirit of God, when I was praying this morning, He keeps showing me this place in California where they produce films where they produce movies uh, which is like a studio or a production house and the Holy Spirit is saying we need to pray for such an establishment we need to pray for studios or film production houses in the United States of America and California so that they are God protected so that if they are electrical or other types of forms, they will be discovered and easily um, rectified so as to avoid loss of property and endangerment of human life. God is saying we must pray against a fire incident which may damage a lot of property and endanger human life. So let us watch and pray as saints. I know some among us may adopt a holier than thou attitude that uh, some of these production houses are producing material which has got nothing to do with Christ. So why pray for them? And then my question will be, why pray for the whole world in the first place? Because the Bible uh, instructs us to pray for all men. I'm going to read that verse, which instructs us to pray for all men. All men is all men, whether they are acting movies, or they are producing films, they may be producing materials which do not agree with our faith. They may be producing films which are even working against our faith. But um, the Bible uh, commands us in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Therefore I exhort first of all, that supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, or all human beings, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life, 
in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So, because God desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, it's our duty when God shows us something in a vision to pray for all men. Regardless of what they are doing, they may be acting all sorts of movies that don't agree with our faith. But it's our duty as Christian believers to pray for all men without judging them. Because scripture commands us to pray for all men. When Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross at Calvary, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He was not praying for his disciples because it's not his disciples who were killing him or who had crucified him on the cross. But it's the people who are anti-Jesus, it's the people who are against Jesus. So this teaches us that we need to pray for all men, be it men or human beings in Hollywood, or human beings in Bollywood, or human beings in Hollywood. Wherever they are, we need to pray for them. 